It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Nice to have you here with us today. We have two outstanding elementary schools here playing our game and we invite you to play along with us in this, our 37th year of competition. Let's meet today's teams. First from Allenwood Elementary School, would you say hello to Isaac? Hey Isaac, nice to have you on the show. A fifth grader and in the captain's chair over there, Laura, hey Laura, looking good in their matching jerseys over there and Ethan is here. He is a great student as well as you're about to see. And let's meet their competitors. Fort Foot Elementary School, the reigning champ on elementary in our elementary competition. Say hello to Zachariah. He's a fourth grader. Hey, Zach, nice to have you here. And returning from last year, Jace. Jace, nice to, what a great student he is. Look at those great shirts over there, the Fort Foot Bears. And a fourth grader, Leona Marie, nice to have you with us today, too. First time on our show. I know she's going to be impressive. And here on the Science Bowl, we have six categories of questions. Here they are. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty, the five and 10 point questions. Easier, then we get increasingly more difficult. 15, 20, 25, the toughest question of them all. Both teams start out at 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds today, one of these two good-looking teams will come back to play Kenilworth for the chance to move on to this year's semifinals in our elementary competition. Let's go over and make sure everything is working properly. Laura, would you try that red team buzzer? It looks and sounds good. Good luck to you, Isaac, and to Ethan. And Jace, how about the Ford foot buzzer? All right, it works as well. Hey, Zach is a pusher. <laughs> That's good. Good luck to Zach and Jace and Leona Marie. Have a good time today, guys. You have already proved that you're great students. Let's have a good game. May the better team win. We go alphabetically A before F. So, Allenwood and Laura, let's play the bowl. Let's green, go. Green things for five. Green things for five points. If you go to Disney World, don't be surprised if one of these branchless trees, synonymous with Florida, walks up to you and talks. Palm trees. Palm trees have no branches. And you know how they dress up like Mickey Mouse and Goofy? The palm trees are dressed up too and they walk up and they, hey, Leona Marie, welcome to Disney World. All right, no points. Go back to Laura. Pick again. Laura. Go ahead. You choose. You're the captain. Yeah. Do you want to do zoo parade or do you want to do green things? Okay. Laura, okay. pick something. Zoo parade for 10. Zoo parade for 10 points. The mean Grinch who stole Christmas, was compared in a song to the greasy black peel of an overripe one of these fruits. Uh, Allenwood? Absolutely, it is the banana. banana. Just wait until we recognize you before you give your answer. I like your enthusiasm, but don't yell out until you ring in and Mr. Z says, go, tell me your answer. Good, all right, the banana it is, the greasy black peel. Go, Laura, you choose. Mm. Body, body system for five. Body systems for five points. If you say something to somebody that is offensive or outrageous, they might say, you have got somewhat. You have got somewhat, Fort Foot. Nerve. Nerve, that's right. You have got some nerve. <laughs> Good answer. Five points, you're on the board. Go green. Jace, pick. Mm. 
Zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25. Big one in that category. Here it is. Very large birds like condors and other kinds of vultures find it easier to fly in the afternoon when the war when the air warms up because they catch these T initial currents which lift them up. T initial. The answer has to begin with the letter T. Thermal. Thermal. We got to ring in. You got to ring in. Thermal. Uh, Jace, I think it's best that you hold that buzzer. All right, since you're the captain there. Okay. Thermals is the right answer. Correct. Good. Go. Green. Zach, not to take anything away from you, but just since he's, he's answering on your point, yeah. All right. Go. No, you don't have to push it now. All we need you to do now, Chase, is pick a category and okay. a number because your Green team got the last correct 25. answer. Green things for 25. Which one? Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points is a visual question. All right, Allen Wood and Fort Foot, look at the monitor. We have a picture for you. Something that you really don't want to see if you're a gardener. If you're a gardener, you go outside and you see one of these slugs. It's like, oh, they're disgusting. Let me tell you about them. One of the greatest dangers to green things in your garden are these slimy slugs, creatures that are snails without shells. Slugs and snails, clams, oysters, and scallops all belong to what M-initialed group of animals? They are all what, Fort Foot? Mollusks. They are mollusks, indeed. They are. Yes, sir. Good. Green. 25 more points. Go. You pick again, Jace. Body systems for 25. You're going to go for that one as well. All right, the big question in body systems today. How many of you have a Fitbit? Do you ever count your steps or check your body? You guys are too young. You're all fit. Today's exercisers are always monitoring their data, like hours of sleep, daily steps, carbs eaten, heart rate, and something called BMI, which stands for what? What is BMI? Something we monitor today, Fort Foot Chase. Which got? Um, body mass index. Yes, indeed. It is body mass. It was in there. It took a while to come to the surface, but you got yourself 25 more points. Nicely done, young man. Go again. You get to pick again, Jace. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 10, 20 points. All right, teams, stay with me. Some big words, but it's going to be a simple answer. Just follow me. We're going to follow some food. As you eat your food, it goes into the stomach first. Then it passes through an opening called the pyloric sphincter into something called the duodenum, which is the first part of what next digestive organ? Come on, Alan Wood. Pass it to Ethan. What's that? Pass it to Ethan. Come Intest on, Ethan. Intestines? Which one? It Which one? Help him out, Laura and Isaac. There's more than one intestine. Which one do you want? From the stomach into what? The stomach into... Oh, okay. Fort Foot, can you give us the digestive organ that follows the food after the stomach? The small intestine. It's the small intestine, yes. There's a small intestine and a large intestine. Nice try. The buzzer has rung. We've come to the end of the first round, and Fort Foot has a lead over there, 150 to 60 for Allenwood, but things can change. Fortunes can switch. Come back with us in a few moments for the second half. Welcome back, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed that first round. Yes, indeed, some tough questions, but equally tough competitors. We have six wonderful young people here playing our game today. And uh, let's go over and meet them, find out a little bit about themselves and their schools. Laura, tell us about Allenwood. Who's your principal there? Miss Fabui. Yes, indeed. And she is so proud of you guys. Uh, Allenwood has been coming here for a number of years, and you're always just first rate players here. Tell us who your coach is. Miss Williams and Mrs. Mr. Ortiz. So you have two coaches, yes, Dr. indeed. Romani. And Dr. Romani. Oh my goodness, you got three, almost a coach for every player there. That's just wonderful. And you can see all the hard work that they put in based on what you're doing here today. Uh, any alternates on your team? Yes, Somaya. Wonderful. And we'll bring that alternate out in just a few moments here. Tell us something, Laura, about Allenwood. People don't know anything about your school, but you're really proud of your school. Why? Tell us why. The teachers are nice and they give like they give us like prize every time we 
participate or like competitions like so they make it they motivate you mm -hmm. they motivate you to do your best if they you give you compliments and prizes or whatever and uh, I, I know they're good teachers down there and, and they're lucky to have good students like you Laura tell us what you want to do someday I want to be an accountant accountant yes because you were telling me what a good math student you are right yeah. Yeah, so you're right up there with the STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. That is, you can't separate them so much anymore today. Nice to have you on the show today. Ethan, nice to have you here. And Ethan's over there. He's playing with some of the letters behind his name because he's a Lego guy. He likes to build things. Star Wars Lego. Yeah, and you also uh, like math, right? Of course, yes. What would you like to do as a profession? Uh, professional. Like a, a job someday. As job some way, uh, I would like to be a doctor. Yeah. Um, I want to be a doctor because I like helping people. Mm -hmm. You know, a doctor, you know, they help people recover from injuries, all of that. And of that's that. why I want to be a doctor. You know, we all discovered how important doctors are during this pandemic, you know, because everybody was threatened by these viruses and, you know, we depended on, on medical science. So they'd be lucky to get you, Ethan, in, in, in their fraternity. Uh, Ethan, what do you do in your spare time? Uh, what I do in my spare time, you, I, I like to build and play with Lego I make. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes I buy sets because they're cool, and Lego does a good job at designing them. I'm not shouting them out. I'm not their sponsor. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you, for also, sharing. Thank you for sharing that with us. And Isaac, why would you want to be on the Science Bowl? What, was, what? what uh, lured you onto this team? I want to be here because it it make it's probably making me know more about science, and this is going to help me more about science. Yeah, we hope you learn. learned something from the show, definitely. But we also want to know what you know, you know, because you're here to share uh, your knowledge and get some points in this game here. What would you like to do someday, Isaac? Have you thought about that yet? Uh, probably someday I could play soccer in in a field, probably playing with my friends. And yeah. that's what we do in school, playing in recess, soccer. Yeah, we were talking soccer. about soccer. And soccer is scientific. You know, there's physics involved, and there's uh, you got to keep your body in shape. you got to know something about physiology. So, yeah, science is going to work for you. Nice to have you on the show. Ford Foot. nice to have you guys here. As I said, you were the champs from last year. You are the reigning champs. you got the matching shirts over there, the Fort Foot Bears. And Chase, tell us about Fort Foot. Who is your principal? Our principal. It is Dr. Daniel. Yes, indeed, and she is here today, and she is so proud of you guys. And who's the coach of your team? And our coach is also a doc, uh, starts with a doctor. It's called Dr. Davis. Wonderful, yes, and Dr. Davis was here. She was actually a judge on a previous program, so she is so heavily invested in the program, and uh, we thank her for, this is her first year as a coach. Chase, tell us, uh, any alternates on your team? Well, there is an alternate. His name is uh, Joseph Brake. Wonderful. We'll bring Joseph out in a few moments here. And something about Fort Foot that you've been dying to share with us. What is it about the school that makes you happiest? Fort Foot is the best. <laughs> that sounded like you rehearsed it and you did a nice job too. And I know Dr. Daniel is very happy to hear you say that. Someday, Jace, what are you going to do? I'm going to become a pilot. A pilot. You'll be a good pilot. I, you got the discipline. You got the demeanor. Good luck in the second half. You're a very smart young man. With lots of poise, too. Zachariah, you're a fourth grader. What made you want to do this today? Uh, I really, I'm really competitive first. Yes, yeah. I like competition. You like co Because you play all kinds of sports, don't you? Yeah, I play a lot of sports. So you're soccer and baseball and football and all of that. Uh, I bet you're a good science student, too. Yes, yeah, science is actually my favorite subject. Your favorite subject, it's, yeah. And you didn't have I to find it Go I ahead. find it very entertaining to learn about science. Entertaining, yeah. And you just mentioned something important. Because if you're not entertained, if it's not fun, you oftentimes don't stick with something. Thanks for sharing that. Leona Maria is a fourth grader here, and uh, you told me you like science. You, you want to be a painter someday, yes? Mm hmm And you paint and you draw now in your spare time? Yes. Yeah. And um, what made you want to be on the Science Bowl? I really wanted to learn more science in the Science Bowl, and it's, other than math, my favorite topic as well. That's wonderful. So you and Zachariah uh, join in your enthusiasm for science. I know Jace is a uh, science guy too. Uh, 
It's going to be a pilot someday. Let's get back into the game. 60 for Allenwood, 150 for Ford Foot. Last correct answer came from the green team. So, Jace, you're up again. Pick a category and a number to start the second half. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. This is how I like this question. A rainbow. Rainbows are beautiful. One of nature's most spectacular displays. It is produced by the dispersion of sunlight as it passes through these. Allenwood. Rain. You got it, Ethan. The raindrops act like little prisms up there. That's the way to start the second half here. Go, Laura. You pick. Mm -hmm. Science Pope for read for 10. Science Pope brief for 10 points. Your question is this. It's about opposites. The opposite, of course, of larger is smaller. The opposite of long is short. And in the case of animals that are of different sizes, the opposites are greater and less. four foot. Greater and less. Lesser is correct, absolutely right. Greater kudu, lesser kudu. Usually the smaller of the two animal types. Good answer, go green. Jace, you get to pick again now. Give me a category and a number. Don't push the buzzer. Let's do green things for 20. F green things for 20 points. Bee, bee larvae that are fed something called royal jelly will turn, those bees will turn into queen bees. You get to be a queen if you eat the royal jelly. The jelly contains vitamins and protein and is pre, a pre-digested form of this substance that bees eat when they visit the flowers. Four foot, what do the bees eat? Nectar. Talk among yourselves, Alan Wood, in case I have to come Nectar. to you. Don't just sit there waiting. Nectar. Jace. Nectar. No, not nectar. All right, Alan Wood, bees eat this when they visit the flower. And in the pre-digested form, it's the substance that they feed that to make royal jelly. Okay, come on, Ellen Wood. Pollen is right. Yes, they eat the pollen. Good. Go red. Laura, you choose. Go. Come on. Don't take so much time. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. All right. All right, four-part answer. Four-part. Put on your thinking caps. The four planets that revolve closest to the sun are these four planets. Name them. Mercury, four foot. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Venus, Mars. You got them. Ah, oh, perfect. Ten points. Go four foot. Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. The largest of all the dinosaurs that ever lived were herbivores. They had to eat a lot of plants to satisfy their hunger, which meant their stomachs, like those in cows, were huge machines for this F initial process to take place. What is that F initial process, Fort Foot? What you got? We need something from you. Uh, uh. Alan, Woodward, Alan Woodward, moving to you. These large herbivorous dinosaurs ate a lot of plants, which meant they're like today's cows, which meant their stomachs also had this F initial process take place inside. Because they were herbivores. It's called fermentation. 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 It breaks down, produces a lot of gas, you know, smells, smells around cows because they're producing a lot of gas because of fermentation. Go again green. Jace, you pick. Let's go. Zuparade mm. for 20. Zuparade for 20 points. All right, here's the question. It's a visual question. Look at the monitor. Ethan, everybody, look at the monitor at the picture for Zuparade for 20 points. The animals, these mammals, which have a very high metabolism, literally eat away part of their brain in the winter to save on energy and then regrow the lost parts in the spring. Name that animal. Name it Fort Foot. It looks like a shrew. Again. Again? It's a shrew. It is a shrew. Yes, indeed, sir. Good answer. Go. Got yourself 20 more points. Fort Let's, Foot shoes. Um, Science potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25, big one in that category. You probably feel like I do. You know, if it's hard for your brain to get started in the morning, you got a lot of company. If that's the case, 
You're said to be suffering from the sleep version of this I-initialed word that says, a body at rest wants to stay at rest unless it is acted upon by an equal and opposite force. What I-initialed word defines that? Chase. Inertia? Yes, sir. Sleep inertia. Inertia is something doesn't want to move, but once you push it hard enough, it overcomes that inertia and off you get going. Good. Go. Green. Yes, sir. Dateline science for 25. Dateline science for 25 points. Two-part answer. Come on, Alan Wood. I know you can get this one. Using one of his own telescopes, this Italian man discovered what he thought were four stars around Jupiter. In reality, this man discovered four what's. Who was the man and what did he discover? Who was the man and he discovered four what's, four foot? Um, the man was Galileo since he had a telescope and uh, four planets orbiting uh, the planet was a moon, four Absolute. moons. Absolutely right. They were four moons orbiting Jupiter and it was indeed Galileo. Excellent work. Go, green. Go again, Jace, you can pick. Okay, let's get physical for 25. Physical for 25 points. Sharks can swim through water with very, with remarkable ease because their textured skin reduces this R initialed factor similar to drag. Fourth foot. Alan Wood, think about an answer that I might have get from you. What R initialed factor similar to drag lets sharks move with remarkable ease through the water? Uh, resistance. Resistance is right. Yes, thank you, Ethan. Good. Go. Red. Green things for 15. Which one? Green things Green for, things for 15, 15 points. You know, sometimes you go into the supermarket and you see red peppers and yellow peppers. Red and yellow peppers develop those colors as green peppers ripen. Yes. Chase. Uh, chlorophyll? Yes, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll disappears and those other pigments, those carotenes, come to the fore. You we're thinking ahead. You knew, anticipated exactly where I was going. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Let's get physical for 20. Physical for 20 points. The most deadly part of a hurricane is not the wind or the rain, but rather the water that rushes onto the shore. It is called the storm what? Flood. Not the flood, no. Good try. Alan Wood. The worst part of a hurricane, not the wind, not the rain, but the water that rushes onto the shore, it is called the storm what? Uh, the, um, it's called the storm surge. The, the storm, storm surge. surge. A lot of times if you're listening to coverage on the television, they talk about that in it. That's what comes in and destroys so many of the homes. Go again, Green. Dateline science for 20. Dateline for 20. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1945 was shared by Howard Florey and Alexander Fleming for the discovery of this P-initialed antibiotic, the first antibiotic ever on Earth. Alan Wood. Protein? Not protein. Good try, Ethan. First ever antibiotic discovered by Alexander Fleming. Can you name it, Jace? It is penicillin. It is indeed penicillin. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Science potpourri for 20, no, 15. Science potpourri for 15 points. The major ways that we humans quantify our lives include the following measurements. Our weight, our height, our mass, and this chronological unit. Age. Age, yes, age or time or years. Absolutely right, yes indeed, all right. Boy, you're up close to 300 points over there, Jace. Yeah, you're playing a super game here. Alawa, don't you give up on me. There are more points to be won up there. Jace, you pick the next category. Body system for 10. Body system for 10 points. <laughs> uh, if you gulp down your food very quickly, people will say that you did this to your food, a verb usually associated with breathing. Four foot. Inhaled. Yes, that's right. Sometimes people eat so fast they say, you just inhaled that hot dog. Yeah, all right. All right. 
The buzzer has sounded. We've come to the end of the game, and it has been a tour de force for Ford Foot. A good effort by Alan Wood. We'll come back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back. Well, it was all Jace today. We can see why Ford Foot is our reigning champ over there. Uh, as he said in his great baritone, Ford Foot is the best. Well, it is today, but that's not to say that Allen Wood isn't also the best because they played a wonderful game. Nice round of applause for everybody here today. Our final tally is Allen Wood 120, Fort Foot 300 points. Congratulations, Fort Foot. We're going to see you playing Kenilworth, another step closer to another championship. Jace, tell us who you got back there. Hey, we got uh, we got Joseph Brake, uh, Dr. Davis. And Dr. Daniels. Absolutely. <laughs> Nicely done, Jace. And Laura, would you be good enough? Could you introduce everybody you brought with you? Oh, and matching blue back there. <laughs> this is Miss Gobo, our vice principal. This is Samaya Lewis. And this is Miss Williams. Yes. And Ms. Mr. Ortiz. Thank you all for all the work you've done. And I like you've got your sash on. You're a safety patrol. I know you're a very responsible young lady over there. Thank you all for being here to play our game. We enjoyed having you very much, and we enjoyed that you tuned in for another edition of Science. We'll hope to see you next time. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye, everybody.